Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And oh, it's it's almost been chilly in the evening with all the rains that have come. So we've had uh, close to, th- I think, over four inches, close to five inches of rain at our house. And so that is, it's like a half inch every day. It builds up pretty quick. It's kind of exciting. So things are happening quickly right now. Right now, uh, the berries are finally coming on. So blackberries, raspberries. Oh, there's nothing like them fresh off the the canes, fresh off the vines. The grapes are starting to hang pretty heavy with clusters of grapes. So this is this is just summer rains. It, it, this helps to produce more larger berries more bigger clusters of 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 grapes uh, right now my lilac so we're selling more and more repeat blooming lilacs and lilacs love this kind of summer when it's super hot let's say it's 100 degrees 102 uh, in the summer lilacs kind of go i'm not i'm not gonna bloom again when it's this hot but when it's like this the evenings are cool the uh the rains are here. They just, they flourish. They just thrive in the yard. So so these repeat blooming lilacs are called bloomerangs. They bloom in the spring like regular lilacs. Then they bloom again now, as soon as the mon kind of halfway through the monsoon season. And then they'll bloom again in the fall of the year. And so they have three basic bloom cycles: same fragrance, same beauty, and they're generally dwarfed. That is, they only get about hip high. Whereas a standard lilac gets like a crepe, crepe myrtle, really big, or Rosa Sharon, they get above head height. So they're bigger, but they still have that same fragrance. So they just, I noticed, uh, what are all those monarchs doing on my lilac? What's going on? I take a closer look. They're in full bloom. No wonder. Butterflies love flowers of summer, especially lilacs. And so these are all things that are happening right now uh, for in, in, the, in the gardens. A little trick for you, just something I do for myself. So now, your black, your berries, kind of any kind of berry, but especially ones that are brambles, you know, boysenberries and blackberries and marionberries and raspberries, as they're fruiting and they start to ripen up, put some bird tape on that where the where the berries are, and it'll freak out the birds. It's this reflective tape. It's usually red on one side. And it's like a, a chrome or, or a brightly colored reflective surface surface on the, on the backside. And it flutters and just spooks the birds. It keeps them off of your berries. And so they just won't bother them. It's highly, highly effective. You really want to put it on those those that bramble, that cane as it's coming out. You want to put that on just before they ripen. Because birds can or often do get used to that reflection, and so it doesn't it doesn't spook them as much. You kind of want to do it right as they're starting to ripen up. It'll keep the birds off. Here's the insider tip, though. We all know what bird tape is. It's, it's very inexpensive. It's at the garden center, easy to use. Just strips about, I don't know, two, three feet long. Let it flutter and fly around the wind. What I do is I'll, I'll put that on the, the canes that are fruiting, and you'll notice that your berries are only fruiting on about half of those canes. You, there's a special pruning technique that you use with berries to really get them to produce. Berries form the best fruits, the largest berries on last year's wood, last year's new growth. So a big long cane that's grown 10 feet this year, next year that's what's going to have, it's going to be loaded with berries. And then generally I'll try to prune out this this year's, that when it's done fruiting, on this year's cane, I'll, I'll go in and cut that one out of there. So I've always got brand new canes always coming on. If you're marking that cane with a piece of flagging tape or, or bird tape, I leave it on there even after the fruit, even after I'm done picking all the fruits. And it's my way of knowing now which cane, which in, in January, February, March, when you're pruning back your berries, you're going to know which ones were the, had the fruit on it. You'll literally forget 
They all look big, green, chunky, uh, bramble branches. And so the bird tape, I just look for the bird tape. Prune those out this winter. Leave the ones that are haven't fruited yet. They're just big, long canes. And that's where you're going to get the best production on that bramble. No matter what kind of berry it is, you'll get that kind. You'll get better production on that cane. So hopefully, I explained that where it made sense. Flag those canes that have fruit on them, keeps the birds off, and leave it on there, and prune those off this next winter, so that you're always getting active, vibrant, new berries coming on on that bramble. So that's that's a good 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 way to do it for boysenberries, marionberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Do it that same way, and it works really well. At least that's what I do. Grapes are totally different. There, you just print, you just whack the whole thing back. And so it puts on grapes on that brand new uh, vine that's growing up. So my, my grapes have grown probably 15 feet already. And so I've whacked it back to the fence posts, back to about oh, head height or so. And then I'll, I'll just encourage it to grow like crazy. And then it's the more foliage, the more growth you get, the more leaves take in the, the sun, creates more photosynthesis. So it creates the sugars to make more grapes. It just, it just makes them grow better. One thing I am doing right now is I'm taking advantage of the rain of fertilizing everything. Oh, it, you could not think of a better opportunity to keep your plants healthy. That's the grapes, the berries, the, I can feed everything, the, 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 the lawn. I've got a, a, a thyme lawn that's just stunning. Well, if you fertilize it with some all-purpose plant food, that 744, that cottonseed meal and the bird guano and that mix just ignites the growth, and you get it to really fill in nice and thick. Your, your uh, uh, wildflower beds, fertilize them deadhead them a little bit. They'll come right back into bloom. That yarrow that's been in bloom for two months, starting to fade back some, just whack off those seed heads, fertilize a little bit of, of that all-purpose plant food. They'll come right back into bloom for you. Sage is the same way, a meadow sage. There's so many, echinaceas, galardias. These are all things, if you just deadhead them and fertilize, they'll come right back at you with more flowers. It's pretty easy to do. Roses, same way. So uh, the other things that can benefit, you'll get better color out of your crepe myrtles, out of your Rosa Sharon's, these summer blooming types of plants. You'll get better color in the autumn by fertilizing now with all-purpose plant food. You'll get better autumn color coming from your maples, your aspens, uh, those, those things that just, they're going to be rock stars here in October, November when they start turning color. Fertilize them now, though, and it lowers the pH, and it brings that brighter red, brings out brighter golds out of that foliage, brighter purples from your raywood ash. And so take, fertilize now. If, you're, if your plants are a little off color, fertilize. It'll make a difference. With the, it'll activate with the rain, and it will change that plant within just days. Literally, you can watch it happen uh, from one day to the next. It's just it's taking up that food and lowering the pH of your soil so the plants just thrive even more. You can get a whole other set of flowers, growth, and better health on those plants. For your evergreens, your pines, uh, your junipers, cypress, cedars, all those conifers, things with a needle, they greatly benefit from a summer feeding. It'll keep the bugs out of them. So they're actively taking up the rain. They're rehydrating. They're forming another ring of wood on that on that plant. And to give it some fertilizer, this plant can now grow lark, can grow more, and it keeps the insects out of the bark of that tree. So so pinion pine scale, ips beetle, flathead borers, uh, bark beetles. These are all guys that love the taste of evergreens. If you simply treat them with any care at all. They can, they can fend these things off themselves. It really makes them healthy. And you'll get better candle growth later in the season. Just It's really good time. The rains really make things grow fast. We have a lot in store for you this show. So uh, I've got Lisa Waters Lane coming in with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. 
Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, verbena, and crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle flowers are intense watermelon pink, solar reds, and LED whites that cover this heat-loving shrub. Plant where you enjoy its beautiful multicolored bark and sinuous branches up close. The flowers show against forest green foliage that turns red and orange in autumn. Growing to just head height, every yard has room for at least one, and only available for summer planting here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Wondering why the grass is always greener on the other side? Well, it's probably because your neighbor used the all-purpose fertilizer from Waters Garden Center. Monsoon is right around the corner, and it's the perfect time to feed your plants. Waters All-Purpose Fertilizer is the only organic made especially for Arizona mountain soils. Don't buy a bunch of different fertilizer for your flowers, veggies, trees, or grass. This one does it all. The plants on your side will be happier, healthier, well, greener. Safe, natural, organic. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? And uh, so we can get some insight into that. So welcome to the studio, uh, Lisa. Thank you. Always good to be here. Really? Um, yes. <laughs> it actually is hard to come up with content 52 weeks out of the year. I, I talk to other business owners or, or uh, hosts or podcasters or, or con- content creators. Mm-hmm. And uh, they go, oh, that's a great idea. I just want to do that. I also want to write a book and I want to start my own. Go, yeah, it sounds really good <laughs> until you have to actually do it every week, coming up with original, entertaining, mm-hmm. insightful, uh, knowledgeable Mm-hmm. type of content and so it gardening is, is actually easier than ever i mean i can't imagine doing insurance <laughs> attorneys accountants actuaries, you know, actuaries yeah. <laughs> anyway, so this is garden questions mm-hmm. so what do we got anything interesting going on with the well, monsoon rains well sure they're always interesting right right <laughs> yeah well sometimes they're more interesting well, than we do others. since we've had that moisture we have a lot of weird weeds and vines and things yeah. growing that we probably didn't have last year because they just kind of sat dormant in the ground because there wasn't enough moisture to get yeah. them going. But this year we have stuff going. So the weeds are coming out in full force. That's for sure. But Marty has a weed growing in her yard that looks very similar to morning glory, but okay. a little bit smaller. She wants to know, can I just let it grow? It looks kind of pretty. <laughs> yeah. Or is it something I should take care of? Yeah, you should take care of that. So so it is a morning glory. We call it wild morning glory, I'm guessing. Now, there is actual morning glory. It grows mm-hmm. here. Now, we're not allowed to sell the seed because uh, if cattle eat morning glory, they stop eating, they stop gaining weight. Ranchers just outlawed morning glory, selling morning glory seed here in the state of Arizona 100 years ago. So, But you can still... Find it from a friend. <laughs> There's still ways to find it. So there's always a black. That's market. one with a great big blue flower, purple flower. Right. And so there's a cousin to that called Wild Morning Glory that is much more aggressive, mm-hmm. and it climbs up. It's also called choke weed. Yeah. It chokes out corn, chokes out your your vegetables, chokes out your flowers, chokes out. If you stand still long enough, it'll choke you out. So you really don't want this in your yard. And it's an annual. It comes back by seed mm-hmm. every year. And so it's the rains are kind of what started. So I'm sure we have seen a little bit showing up here, but it'll climb up fences, mm-hmm. form a seed, and then spew it all over the yard. And so it's very insidious. So you really don't want this in your yard. So mm-hmm. kill it. Pull Is it, it out. also known as bindweed? Bindweed. Is that another name? Yep. That's it, yeah. Usually it's like a little pink or white flower on it. Yeah, comes in a couple different colors, but uh, none of it is good. Okay. Don't let it grow. Uh, decimate is a really easy uh, uh, type of weed killer. It's it's a, a liquid. Mm-hmm. Mix up in a, in a pump up spray can, spot treat that, and it'll be dead by the end of the day. Basically, mm-hmm. it's really fast. Keep up on it. You know something uh, you mentioned that. Last year didn't have rain, drought. We didn't have as many weeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this year we do. Uh, I, I saw a study that said there's like 2,000 seed in every square foot of <laughs> soil wild. you see sitting there waiting to be disturbed or right. moistured. They're laying, laying in wait. Mm-hmm. There was an unbelievable number. Wow. Yeah. How, how is that even possible? 
but then you see the rains come and you see why it's possible. Mm -hmm. That's a good uh, reason to use the weed and grass stopper. That it's a preventative or oh, yeah. pre-emergent. Uh, it is hugely useful if you don't want to be out there pulling a ton of weeds all the time. Again, bindweed or, or wild morning glory, that is a an annual. It mm -hmm. only comes back by seed every year, right. never by the roots. So if you can put that out where that weed and grass stopper out where they seem to come up along the driveway mm -hmm. next to that fence line, you can eliminate any of the work, eliminate having to spray weed killers because you took care of it before be they even came pulling, up. You bet. Good advice. All right. Our next question is from Ch Shannon and Chino. Um, she wants to put in raspberries, blackberries, marion berries, all the berries. Wants to know uh, what kind of light do they need? Do they need to be on a trellis or can you just kind of let them free form? Yeah, good. So, um, so Shannon, Chino Valley is, they've got some very nice vineyards out there. So grapes, uh, brambles, blackberries, raspberries do amazingly well. The secret with berries, they need sunlight. Mm -hmm. And so Chino's pretty good with the sunlight. I would say at least six hours or more of sunlight will get you a nice big cluster of berries. Um, we're starting to harvest those right now. So mm -hmm. this is when you, so from, from summer through autumn is when you pick most of the berries. Mm -hmm. And it's a great time to plant some sure. for next year's harvest. So yes, you can definitely have that. Uh, I would say one little insider tip when you're planting berries, it's one, come talk to us and we can show you how to plant them. But with berries, they're very sensitive to having soil on their canes or on mm -hmm. their their stems. Mm -hmm. Don't let any soil touch that when you're planting them or they will crown rot or stem rot uh, in the garden. So they can come back from the roots. But hey, why do that? Right. Like this beautiful plant you bought from the nursery you want it to live and thrive and grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then trellis or not to trellis, fence or not to fence. Brambles seem to find their own way. They just grow and have big stems. If you want to keep them in bounds, mm -hmm. so keep tie them next to a fence or tie them up to a trellis. It'll keep them from being uh, you know eight by eight by eight okay. sprawling plant. It'll be two by eight by eight uh, sprawling plant against it the fence It makes it line. easier to pick to the manage. fruit as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. There's also uh, just insider tips. That's one when you come look, we can guide you through this, but there's thornless varieties. Mm -hmm. So you don't look like you've been in a cat fight <laughs> when you go to pick the berries. It's just, yeah. there are certain varieties that do better here. So of okay. course that you'll find those at Water's, Water's Garden Center, Center of course. <laughs> Gotta get and you can check in. them on the website. So okay. top10plants.com. Sure. You can see what's on. Okay. Good information. Uh, next is Laurel in Prescott Valley. She wants to know, is it okay at this time of year to trim up some of her shrubs? So roses, crepe myrtle, yeah. butterfly bush. Um, is it okay to trim those this time of year? Yeah, absolutely. Especially the spring bloomers. So forsythia, lilacs, flowering quince, azaleas, rhododendrons. Prune those things back now. And they'll start forming their buds through autumn, through the winter, and they'll bloom next spring. Mm -hmm. Things like butterfly bush, rose of Sharon's, crepe myrtles, the things that bloom in the summer, chaste tree. There's a ton of uh, uh, mm. desert willow. There's a ton of them. Right. Uh, those, you're better off right now deadheading the spent flowers. Focus on the flowers. Pitch mm -hmm. the flowers off, and they'll repeat bloom. Okay. And then this winter, let's say November, December, January, uh, when it's definitely they've gone dormant, that's the best time to plant or to prune those back. Okay. Right now, if you prune them back too much, you can affect their flowers. They won't bloom anymore. And we're in the peak of the bloom cycle. So right. why not enjoy the flowers yeah. instead of trying to focus on the the, the size of the plant? Mm -hmm. What the book says is you can prune back 10% of the foliage mass whenever you want. Middle of summer is 100 degrees. Prune it back. Right. Uh, the heavy pruning on summer blooming things are done in the winter. So you can prune up to a third of that foliage, a third of the plant, just whack it right back down uh, in winter. The spring bloomers, you're you're really pruning a third of the foliage mass, really cut it back. Let's see a lilacs, it's really gone berserk, too big. You can prune it back now. So okay. really May, June is ideal, but hey, it's July, go for it. Okay. I think we got time to sneak one more in. So David had a beautiful maple that was slammed by all the hail. Oh, no. Um, to the oh. point that it even took bark off the branches and stems. Wants to know, yeah, that's hard. boy, is it going to make it with that kind of, you know, damage to it? Yeah. 
and, and then just what things should he be looking out for? So what you do, so so the hail really took out portions. And we're seeing pockets of hail all around the county, really. Mm -hmm. And we're not done. So we've got <laughs> hail possible through September. Yeah. So things will relief. They will regrow. They'll actually grow more cambular, more bark area around those damaged areas. Will it live? Will it die? I don't know. I'm not uh, all omnipotent. I'm not sure. But I know I'm always stunned at how plants want to live. Mm -hmm. They want to come back. They want to grow. Just nurse them along at all and they'll come out of it. Yeah. So the best thing now is fertilize with the all-purpose plant food right now. Like take advantage of the, we got three months of growing season left. Take advantage of every day mm -hmm. and it'll form new leaves. You'll probably have great fall color this fall. And that bark area, it'll actually start to grow over. It might take a couple seasons, but it'll grow over and heal itself. Right. I would give it a chance. Don't give up. If it does die, I know where you can buy a beautiful <laughs> new maple tree here in Prescott. So if it, but give it a chance first. Okay, out of time. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Waters Garden Companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, purple verbena, crepe myrtle, and pentas. Pentas are a butterfly magnet with super sweet nectar produced in starry flowers on 12-inch stems. She loves heat and wind with minimal care to keep the flowers coming. The large clusters of vibrant star-shaped flowers are stunning in pots and raised beds. A superb flower that outperforms others as long as it's hot. You'll only find heat-hardy pentas at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I hate weeds. Monsoon rains are so refreshing, even my landscape comes alive. But so do my weeds. Stop weeds in their track in one simple step. Water's weed and grass stopper spreads like fertilizer. It kills weed seed before monsoon rains allow them to sprout. No need to weed. It's safe for trees, even flower beds, and so much safer than that toxic waste the big box sells. Weed and grass stopper, and only found at Water's Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. So I've had several customers come in, gardeners come into the garden center, and they're wondering what to do about their tomatoes. So they're getting some black spots on the end of their tomatoes, uh, and and they're wondering why. What do I do? How do I get rid of it? I'm going well. If it's already got blossom end rot, there's nothing you can do for that fruit. But all the future fruits you can modify, you can change, you can increase their nutrients so it will not rot on that where that flower touched the fruit. And so that's called blossom end rot. It's a classic sign of lack of calcium. Your plants need more calcium. And that will get rid of that, that blossom end rot. Hey, here's why it shows up now. You've been watering so much through June and July, and you flushed a lot of those nutrients out of that soil. And so now, now the plant is lacking some minerals, mainly calcium, probably could use some nitrogen, phosphorus, potash, all the whole balanced mix. But if you give, give your tomatoes calcium nitrate it's a it's a granular food if you've got tomatoes just give it calcium nitrate you will have larger larger tomatoes without that blossom end rot you'll have more tomatoes they'll just be better they, they, they just will taste better but it's loaded up with calcium that's instantly available to your plants so for me i've got the, the tomatoes plants are just are loaded i mean i don't know what i'm going to do with all these tomatoes oh my god i'll bring them into the shop and give them to, to staff members, but uh, lots of tomatoes, but I'm giving them right now some calcium nitrate, very inexpensive, goes a long way. And then I'm spritzing my foliage every, maybe once a week, every other week or so with yield booster, like yield, like high yield booster, yield booster. It's a liquid. It comes in a quart size, ready to use spray can. You, you spritz the foliage and it's liquid calcium. So I for sure am not going to have blossom end rot. And calcium is what makes the flavor come out 
of your plants, of your of your fruit. And so I'll have better tasting fruit, larger fruits, more fruits, just by calcium nitrate at the base, like a fertilizer, and then spritzing the foliage with yield booster. And it's like magic for tomatoes. They love that stuff. But if you're seeing some issues, do that. And it'll just change. In, I mean, just right away, you'll notice a difference. So it really, really ups your game as far as tomatoes. It also works on peppers like uh, jalapenos, whatever kind of pepper, bell peppers. What Peppers like the same kind of thing, including the yield booster. You'll get larger fruits by giving it some calcium. They'll have better flavor. You'll get more production out of your plants by giving it calcium. And the easiest forms of calcium, calcium nitrate and yield booster. They're just automatically available to the plant like right now. Another thing to watch too, I'm noticing that um, the sphinx moth or hummingbird moth, it is, they are everywhere. Oh my goodness. Keep a close work out, look out on your tomatoes because they love to lay their eggs on tomato plants. And so that's the, the larva stage of that particular moth is the green horned worm tomato worm. A great big long four or five inch long caterpillar that eats your, strips the foliage off your tomatoes. Can eat uh, peppers, certain things they like in the gardens. I haven't seen them on my own garden yet, but I am highly alert and looking for them because I know they're coming because I see the adults flying around and I know what they're doing after they go pollinate all the flowers. They're laying eggs in my tomatoes, which will turn into, which they'll, they'll just eat the whole, whole plant for you. So they're hard to spot. They're the same color as a tomato. And usually they're, they're up and down the stems or the vines of that tomato. So they're really hard to, to catch. So if you ever see that, there's a spray. It's called BT. B is in boy, T is in Tom. BT, you just spray the foliage. They come out and eat it. It's, it's completely organic. Very safe for other insects. Very safe for pets. But if you're a caterpillar and you're taking in this, it's a virus, basically. You take in, you spritz the foliage, you eat the foliage, get some of this virus, it gets sick, sick to their stomach. And they don't die immediately. But they stop eating right away, and they finally they just starve to death and drop off the plant. Highly effective organic that's available at your, it's pretty specialized. You'll only find it at garden centers, but it's called B is in BT, B is in boy, T is in Tom. I just have some handy. I guarantee you you're going to have tomato worms. I've never seen the sphinx moth or that uh, hummingbird moth this bad before. It's almost ridiculous. My goodness. Weeds! Are crazy. I mean, weeds are coming up everywhere. We're having to spray weekly at this point here at the garden center. We got two acres. We're trying to keep weed free because I don't want to attract disease, other insects. It just makes the the, the, the store look trashy when it, weeds are growing up in between the tree racks or in between the blocks. So we keep things weed free. We're just using decimate. It's a, it's a fancy, uh, it's a competitor to Roundup but it doesn't cause the cancer that Roundup does. And, and it's even more effective than, than Roundup as far as up in the mountains when it's real cool at night. Roundup really doesn't work that well. But Decimate is amazing. So it really works out well. And then we're spraying a lot. We're, we're spreading a lot of weed and grass stopper. You spread it like a fertilizer, and then it, the water takes it into the ground, and, and it just keeps the seed from germinating. So we're doing two things spraying what's already there with decimate and then preventing anything else from coming up and putting weed and grass stopper down anyway that's it we got lisa watersland coming back in the studio with her segment right after this the mountain gardener your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season some things are just better together. She's the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah, thanks, Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid better together and only at Waters Garden Center. 
Waters Garden Companion Plants by our maple, verbena, crepe myrtle, and rose of Sharon hibiscus. Rose of Sharon is a mountain hardy hibiscus with an enemy like blooms. Each stem of this hardy hibiscus is packed with buds. She makes a beautiful informal hedge or screen and is easily trained into small trees. Available Prescott colors show in blue, purple, white, red, and pink for years of enjoyment. You'll find breathtaking hibiscus here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, it is Ken and Lisa uh, here at The Mountain Gardener, and this segment every week is for Lisa, just a different perspective what are your neighbors talking about? What are the gardeners, what's a different gardener's perspective? And I think there's different ways to look at gardens and you've definitely got that florist flower beautification thing going on at our house. And so I thought, yeah, let's just segment this into your segment and I'll try not to talk. And it's 10 <laughs> minutes straight before. of just you. <laughs> 10 minutes straight, sure. Yeah, well, I'll help fill in just because, well, that's why you married me, to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll let that one go so we did celebrate our 35th 34th up at the lake yep lake powell so yeah good times i would do it again the, the 34th yeah. and all 34 years <laughs> all of them all of them all i of mean them. there's some rougher than others. those first years as your first child kind of you don't know what to do the first few years of marriage, you're like you starve to death. You don't quite make enough to really get you going. Yeah. So you just kind of, and you got to buy all this stuff. And so you don't quite have enough to go around. And then twins. We <laughs> thought we had it going on. That we were blessed. One boy, one girl, a pretty, uh, you know, blue four-door sedan. Everything fit. The perfect three-bedroom, two-bath house. And then <laughs> the good Lord blesses you with identical twins. Yep. And nothing fits anymore. So that threw a big monkey wrench into did. everything. But it's been a fun monkey wrench. It has been. It's been yeah. a blessing. Kids so, are a blessing. Good times. So came back from the lake and we'd gotten some rain. We were there almost a week. Came back. And the yard is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. All of our perennials oh, yeah. are in full bloom. The thyme lawn is just blooming its heart out. It's just gorgeous. You got to love the monsoons. This reminds me of the monsoons. Like in the 70s and 80s, remember that? I mean, every after you couldn't go to church on Sunday and and, and leave your windows open because yeah. by the time you got done going to Sunday brunch, coming back, it already rained. So mm -hmm. rain's coming. In the, you had to really just plan ahead every afternoon, right. it was, or it's highly likely yeah. it was going to rain. It's been doing that, mm -hmm. so it's good. Even just the increased humidity, things yeah. things are happy with that. But yeah. all of our our cat mint, um and new things that we had planted or just taken off. And Agastache. The Agastache. Doubled in size yeah. while we were away. <laughs> Everything's happy, happy. Yeah. So it is a great time to plant still. So a lot of people start thinking, and I don't know where this comes from. It's Phoenix or Midwest. It's, I don't it's know. It's that, oh, I can't plant now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's Phoenix. It's the desert stuff. You don't do that in Palm Springs or it's just too hot. Yeah. But you don't live 10 miles from the sun up here. You're like, it's not hot. It's yeah. What's it going to be today? 80s that's not hot that's beautiful with a chance of 80s with a chance of rain that's like magic for gardens so it's still a great time to plant and a great time to dig oh, yeah. because those soils have some moisture in them they're not concrete anymore so it's a great time to be out there planting um, and we did get some new perennials in real pretty so i thought i would showcase a few of those because there's a few new ones the summer perennials those yeah. are always the toughest oh my gosh they take any amount of heat, mm -hmm. as long as you got drainage, typically, right. they're going to grow like crazy, which mm -hmm. we have. That's true. So we did get a new cat mint called Neptune cat mint. Neptune. So this is a nice little dwarf cat mint. Oh. So it's going to get about 12 inches high. I'm sorry, about 12 inches wide, about eight inches. Oh, high. that is almost so, a ground cover like. Yeah, wow. just a really cute little plant has that uh, purpley blue foliage on it or flowers and the thing i like about the flower and i meant to bring one over darn it you should show the folks in the videos you gotta remember this is a vlog not just a radio piece i can't change i'm a luddite <laughs> 
but the flower is a real it's almost the standard size flower that's on the bigger one nice so you really see a lot of flower when it's blooming so very pretty uh we also got in a little gold star black-eyed susan oh neat another dwarf Right. Oh, oh really? And, well, the flowers are, some of the black eyed Susans have that really Huge. great big, big flower. Hand. This yeah. one has about the size of a quarter, I'd yeah. say, but just covered, covered in blossoms. So really, really pretty. And, and those black eyed Susans are those great late summer bloomers. Through fall. Through I mean, fall. Now through fall, mm -hmm. it's going to bloom nonstop. Great right. autumn plant. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a lot of great red hot pokers in. So the ones I like about these is they're the more dwarf red hot poker. So they're not going to take over a bed. Sometimes you put them in a perennial bed yeah. and they get huge. So they're like monsters taking yeah. over the four by four. Mm -hmm. But these guys don't. So we have the mango, which is kind of a, a yellow color. And then we have the orange I think it's orange popsicle or in something. Anyways, it's more of an orange color. Be really gotcha. pretty together. A couple yeah. of those together in a perennial bed. Love the heat. Very drought hardy. Yeah. I th the animal resistant. Yeah, they are. So, so red hot pokers, you can put them right out there with javelina. They're not going to bother them. They just learned right. that's not good. I'm not sure about the dwarfs, but I don't know why a dwarf wouldn't be exactly the same as a standard parent size. I'm sure they're the same. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, we've got a really pretty cone flower in called Sunny Days Ruby. Yeah, I saw that on the Isn't back dock when they're unloading. That's like <laughs> it double pom pom. Your eye, doesn't it's it? it's all, it's like yeah. I, I think it glows in the dark. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh my god! It's out there screaming at you. Yeah. Look at me. We also got one called Baja Burgundy, which is a little bit darker uh, red. The other one's more of a pinkish one, but very very pretty. Gallardia which is another great late summer bloomer, blooms until fall. Um, we have the Sun Rita, which is a yellow and red color one. Very pretty animal resistant yep. for those people. Then we got some really cool um, succulents in. So we have the Autumn Joy Sedum, which is gets up, what, two feet Yeah, tall? knee high or so. Maybe just a little yeah. shy and knee high. Yeah. And has that pink blossom. Well, they, they're coming out with some new varieties Ooh. of the Autumn Joy. So we have... Um, what's the first one called? Darn it! Darn. Oh, well, I did I can't write it read down. Your notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't either. Um, autumn charm, autumn okay. charm. So it's a variegated white and green leaf. Well, that's interesting, especially yeah. with dark rock. Mm -hmm. Again, sedums love the sun. Yeah. So it's sometimes you put these dark mocha colored rocks down. You put a dark green plant in. It's like they blend in. Right. Sometimes those variegated varieties oh, it definitely are stunning. Shows up. It just is very bright with that white and green. It has a pink blossom to it, or will have a pink blossom yeah. to it. So that was a new one. And then we also got dark magic. Now this one probably don't want to put it with dark rock because it would just blend. Right uh -huh. It's got a mocha colored, uh, but it's got or a. a almost black purple oh, foliage. That's neat. I mean, it, you look at it, you go, Oh, wow. Very, very different. Um, and it has a dark pink flower to it. So you get kind of a really nice contrast. Yeah, wow. There. That'd be new. That's one you put with crushed granite, gold <laughs> color with a dark <laughs> foliage. It looks good. It's always right. contrasting. Mm -hmm. It's always a way to design. Oh yeah. And there's a few other succulents out there. I didn't get all the names, but now is a really good time for those guys. So they're going to be starting to bloom very soon. Um, just very pretty out in the yard, very carefree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're not doing a lot of deadheading maintenance on them. So they're, they're nice that we way. Planted was it one, two, three, four, five, six, about 10 different types, not 10 different sedums, but 10 sedums, three different mm -hmm. kinds. Uh, and, and we put them on drip system in the backyard on those mm -hmm. back ter terraced areas right. and drip is okay for them, but really sedums, they don't like our, our city water or well water. They like okay. natural rain. We go up to the lake, come back and they've like, yeah. like grown by 30% just mm -hmm. because of the rain, not just the drip system. So they're, right. it's drain, good drainage, bright sun mm -hmm. and natural water. You just can't beat that for sedums. That is true. That is true. We also got in some Coreopsis, different kinds and colors. summer plants, summer And bloomers. then some really cool daylilies. So, oh. um, and our neighbor's daylily. We came back and our neighbor's daylilies are just singing. Over the top. And they're glorious. Yeah. yeah so. This is their time. Also, animals don't bother daylilies, Coreopsis. Most of these you've talked about. They don't bother them. Uh, right. Rabbits, deer, javelina. Mm -hmm. 
Might eat the sedum though, don't you think? Uh, it just depends how desperate they are. Usually now there's so much moisture around. They're probably a little more. Lots of weeds. I mean, we were coming through uh, Groom Creek, uh, not Groom Creek, uh, Dewey, that area coming over the hill. Green is everywhere. Just <laughs> green. It's so pretty. Very pretty. All these you mentioned are perennial. Mm -hmm. They're best planted now in the summer. Right. So when the ground is moist, warm, and they're just going to continue to grow until about November, then they'll rest underground. Mm -hmm. Kind of take a break and come back fresh, brand new next spring. spring for you. Every spring count on them. They'll just get better and better. So yeah. hardy, tough as nail perennials you can plant in your yard right now here at Waters Garden Center. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. 300,000? Imagine a landscape meeting 300,000 trees. Wow! But that's exactly how many trees Frederick Olmsted planted in New York's Central Park. That guy liked trees. Me too. A 2014 study found the more trees in a neighborhood, the lower the incidence of heart disease. Darwin, Einstein, and Beethoven hung out with trees to help them think. Trees are part of nature that helps us relax, daydream, and feel happier. Plant your own Central Park from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden companion plants for July are hibiscus, maple, crepe myrtle, and purple verbena. Purple verbena is mountain famous for gorgeous summer-long flowers held over compact green foliage. This purple bloomer loves bright gardens, summer heat, and grows best in poor soils with less water. Go ahead and abuse this bloomer. You can't kill it. The perfect native perennial for easy summer long flowers. You'll only find the toughest verbena here at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. Okay, so we are back in the studio, tuned into the, the Mountain Gardener, uh, your host, Ken Lane. And so one of the beauties of having a studio right here at the Garden Center is when you have a really smart person that knows gardening plants, the systems, you can go, hey, so, so Caitlin, come over here and you got to share this with us. That is so interesting. So Caitlin Thomas is with E Verde. Did I pronounce that correctly? E Verde. E Verde. Okay, I'm trying. <laughs> the E Verde. You're giving it so, a good try. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, one of the largest, you got four or five farms that you pull from for us? Yeah, just so, out of Southern California. We have 14 in total. 14. Oh, my, my apologies. Yeah. So 14 farms. So when we get in trouble, we go, Caitlin, we need huge Joshua trees. Like someone wants some of those. I call Caitlin and she tracks them down for us and then corrals them and then puts them on a truck across the desert to, to, to here at Waters Garden Center. So you are really good at that. So, um, And then you introduce some funky new fig, which we got to talk about. But before we do that, tell us about you. How'd you get in the industry? How long you've been doing this? Tell us about the company. Just... What's, yeah. what's, why are you doing this? Definitely. Well, you know, it, it's definitely a niche industry to yeah. be in. And I do get some looks sometimes that people are just a little bit surprised. Um, but you know what? I, I studied agriculture in, in college. I went to a small school in Kentucky where we had a, a huge farm. And uh, I was really involved in our, our farm op operations as well as um, our, our beekeeping operation. That was my main focus. So I really? kind of fell in love. Yeah, I, I fell in love with the just being outside and getting dirty getting my hands dirty the fresh air just all the benefits that nature had to provide and I said wait you can make money doing this yeah. this sounds great yeah so you know I just continued from there and uh, I kind of worked my way up in different companies that I was interested in I did the seasonal thing for a while to to dip my toe into several different aspects of the industry and ended up landing in a, a beautiful family-owned nursery in Flagstaff 
Um, go ahead, say them out loud. They're friends. Warner's Nursery. There you go. We go love Warner's. Those folks. Flagstaff. Yeah. It's broadcast up in Flagstaff yep. too. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I worked at Warner's for a few years and and learned so much. Those folks are incredible to work for, and uh, realized that I was ready to take on something new, explore a, a new venture, get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I uh, actually was. Uh, it it kind of just fell into my lap. A Verde, which was Village Nurseries and Heinz Grower at the time uh, were looking for a new sales rep for Arizona to build out their independent garden uh, customer yeah. uh, base. So they were looking for someone who had experience in that, who who was kind of with the in crowd. And uh, having worked for Warners, I really identified with that business model and uh, wanted to continue working in that that industry with the folks that Family I like. Family owned. You just can't beat it. You can't. I noticed the average tenure is like decades of sales reps growers you, you once you get in you can't get out or you don't want no you're addicted to get out. you're addicted to it's it it's so yeah. exciting so seasonal you never you never learn it all there's always something new oh yeah absolutely. so it keeps you fresh and and it, we're an industry that's not known very well so i think maybe we need to get that out more i, think I don't so. know yeah i mean so. i'm the youngest sales rep in my company by six years okay and then the the, the next youngest guy is my mentor uh, awesome. and then from there you know we've, we've got a, a lot of folks that are probably looking to retire in the next 10 years so there you, go. you know we're always looking Looking for new new people, and yeah. um, we need more people who are genuinely interested in the, in the but industry. But your degree was horticulture, but bees? Did I hear that right? Yes, you, yes. You studied. You went to school for. Bees. Well, it, it was a little bit of a. Understudy, What's your actual degree? But, BS in uh, agriculture and natural resources. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. And uh, okay. I did. Uh, I did an internship with the uh, apiary that we had at the school. Um, I actually created a, a small business um, selling nice. selling bees to uh, local farmers that were very uh, cool. Yeah, they were hardy for the area, which is yeah. an issue. For... Like mason bees or, or honey bees? No, what kind we're of bees? talking honey bees. Really? Yes. Oh. Yes. So. So uh, I raised honey bee hives. I uh, I raised queen bees that then produced hardy stock because most of the bees that you're getting, most of the honey bees that you purchase come from southern states that aren't hardy for winter yeah, states. I had no idea. Yeah. So, really? Yeah. I was looking into um, geographically adapting hives to be able to withstand our winters, which are just out of whack. So share with the listeners, because that's interesting. How do you develop a queen bee? How, how do you just... Do they... How do, where do you even get that from? What did, how, how do you do that? It's so interesting. It's such an interesting science. So essentially what you do is you make a mini beehive. You take yeah. you take food frames, so so frames of honey. Uh, you take about two of those, and then you take a brood frame, which is uh, uh, the, the frames that they lay the eggs into. And, yeah. and what happens is the, uh, the worker bees, without a queen, actually produce their own queen. They feed oh. an egg, and sometimes they do this in multiple situations cells they'll feed an egg a special mixture of uh well i don't want to go deep too That's deep okay. into the rabbit it's, hole but yeah. they feed the bees a special mixture and essentially uh that creates a queen bee and, and out of nothing so they nothing. could have been a regular worker bee yes but then because there isn't a queen there they Correct. feed one of those yes. or two or multiple yeah gotcha and the strongest one wins. Exactly, the strongest one really? wins. In fact, the first one that comes out will go around and and kill all of the other oh. unhatched <laughs> queens. Nice. Yeah, they and they actually chirp to each other. They talk to each other when they're still in their uh, brutal. And, yeah, and they'll tell you know, they're they're starting fights, and then whoever whoever comes out first is the winner. So wow. very interesting stuff. That's very super complex little Thank you. species. Yeah. Didn't mean to go down that rabbit trail, but I know you're a plant person. Yeah, so you're kind of a to... geek. Hey, that's why we're here. That's... We're geeks. You gardeners know. you know that's yeah. it so you had a new fig that is just i'm so excited so we've got it here at the garden center but it's a miniature fig that forms actual figs that's hardy that's tough that's that, yes uh, that's where'd you come up with that tell us a name and just Sell it to the listeners. So. Yeah, so it's it's called Little Miss Figgy. Um, it Great was, name. It was discovered in 2010. 
Um, it was actually a branch mutation from Violet de Bordeaux, which is a different type of fig tree. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, they uh, cultivated it and uh, just continued to uh, propagate. And they came up with this beautiful little fig tree that only gets to be about four to six feet tall and between three to four feet wide. So great for hedges, easy, easy fruit harvesting. So, you know, you don't have to get the ladder out, which none of us want to do anymore. Right. Yeah. You can, the beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful lobed uh, leaves uh, provide a lot of coverage, so obviously they'll be dropping in the winter time. It is winter hardy for Prescott. It goes down to zone seven A. Perfect, that's yeah. us. I, yep. I definitely recommend putting it in a a more protected area. They do want full sun, but something that's just going to give them a little bit more protection. If gotcha. you want a really good uh, fruit harvest, I always recommend not exposing it too much to the elements that we get up here in northern okay. Arizona. Being from Flagstaff, I totally understand that yeah so i yeah. find figs do really well i grow some in containers mm -hmm. some of the bigger models this one i'm going to take one home and do it myself mm -hmm. um it's it's cuter it's yeah. little miss figgy it's, it's little. such a great name it is and already has figs it does already has things forming on yeah which i mean is this awesome. thing the one that i have is about two feet tall by two feet wide and it's already got figs all over yeah. it so it's not something that you have to wait for for several years and oh it's only three feet tall i've got a few more years to go before it starts to bear fruit and what have you this is actually i mean this is genuinely such a perfect little patio plant yeah. so something great definitely a point of interest i'm gonna grow one myself so if you had to pick just one you could go out in the all 14 farms you only had to pick one plant what would be your one plant you would love you just be attracted to that you put in your own backyard Oh, well, I would Only say one. the Sephora Second Flora, which is the Texas Mountain Laurel. Oh, sure. Oh, those blooms are so fragrant. It's just incredible how in how they smell it it's just great so i i, I could honestly that's a zone just, eight is that right it is, is it? it's it's a much more Order desert line? yeah it's, okay. it's a, definitely a Do desert they have a seven to create a seven one that's Can zone we, for us please uh, i'll great. put in a word i'll That'd put in a awesome. word with the guy upstairs could you just uh yeah create... here we do autumn sage that's kind of similar uh -huh. Yeah, it's not the same. It's, it's not pretty. The same. Yeah. So thank you, Caitlin Thomas. Yes. Tree Um Everde. here. Everde. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying. I'll get it. This is our training. Session. That's right. So here at uh, the Mountain Gardener, be right back after this. Don't change that dial. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. Waters 744 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants for the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Ken, with our Vine of the Week and our Arizona Sunset Trumpet Vine. Huge, deep red flowers cluster to create a dramatic summer show. This vigorous vine thrives and blooms with near neglect. Fast growing to cover chain link fence, shade structures, and trellis quick. Easy to train as a ground cover up a rock face to hold soils from erosion in just $34. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love vines that bloom red, they love to shop. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I had mentioned it's a great time to fertilize. Some folks are coming in with some yellow leaves. They're seeing an, an obvious reduction in the in the depth of the green of that foliage. Some of them are just, someone brought in a, a, a maple that was just completely yellow. It shouldn't have been yellow. It should have been rich green. And there's no way that plant is going to turn that beautiful red fall color when it's yellow already in summer. So that's an obvious um, uh, alkaline soil at the root level. So the pH has crept up far too high. It's locking up all the minerals and, and the plant can't get 
to the food, to the iron, to the sulfur, to the, it can't get to all these minerals, boron, magnesium, all these things it needs. And so it gets emaciated, it, gets, it starves. And so it gets this yellow color to it. Very common. And a lot of it's been, your water is very alkaline. And so as you water through June and July, you sh- you're, you're loading up the soil with alkalinity, with that uh, mineral that, kept, that builds up in your sink or in your toilet. That stuff also builds up in the soil. So you need to help it get rid of that. Now, So fertilize with, with the 744 all-purpose plant food. It's got some sulfur in that already, but if it's really yellow, I would give it, in addition, I would give it some soil sulfur. Just get a little bag of soil sulfur. It actually looks like soil pellets. But what soil sulfur does, it makes things acidic. So it lowers that pH immediately. And so now the plant can take up more of the minerals, more of the, that fertilizer that you put down, and you'll see it green up, and you'll get far better fall or autumn color coming up in two or three months. So just some things to watch. Another one, uh, folks are asking for iron, a lot of iron right now. It really it comes down to the pH is too high, and so there's iron in your soil. It just can't get to it. So, so once you lower that pH, everything becomes available to that plant. If you do need iron, let's say it's in a container or a raised bed, you want to green things up. Um, chelated iron, when you see the name chelated, so C-H-E-A, you know, chelated, whatever, however you look for chelated iron or fast release iron. Most iron that you buy, like, like ironite or whatever, over the counter, it doesn't release very fast. And so you're putting down iron now for really a season ahead. So for next year, you're putting iron down, not, not for immediately. Right now, I need it greener. Chelated iron is available to that plant immediately. It'll take it up like right now. Usually it's a liquid form. So you mix up in a watering can, pour it on the foliage or on the roots. Plants take it up. It'll be green. Obviously, richer iron green right away. But first and foremost, though, before you go chelated iron, I would say start with food. Just get a good food that has some soil sulfur in the ingredients so it helps lower that pH. If it's really bad, go ahead and add, in addition to that food, give it some soil sulfur. But for little plants, sometimes you just want to green it up. Just, just add some chelated iron. So we can give you lessons on that. This is, this is kind of my Bailey week. I love playing with the... The, the plant foods. That's why we mix our own up because I like to do that and see how the plants respond. And so it's just healthier for, for the plant. A lot of these fertilizers, they're all, they're all natural or, or organic. So they're, they're safer to use than a chemical-based fertilizer, let's say like a Scott's Turf Builder or something. So some things, we've got uh, classes every Saturday where we go over this stuff. So this, this weekend, it's berries, edible plants with berries and grapes. That's, that's this Saturday. Next, every Saturday at 9.30, we have a garden class. And so next week, we're dealing with the proper planting. How do you plant for great success, faster growth here in the mountains of Arizona? Uh, August 13, it's wild, wildlife and bug prevention. So the javelina, how do you deal with those? How do you keep bark beetles out of your, your pine trees? And then it's the best evergreens for mountain landscapes. And just every week, it kind of changes out. Take a look at those on our website, watersgardencenter.com. We'll have 20, 30 people show up at a class. But do we rotate teachers? So, But throughout the week, we love helping fans of the show just right here at the Garden Center. Bring a phone, have a picture. We have an entire team of folks that are just master gardeners that can help you out. We believe in picking apples and pears fresh from the tree at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Ken here with the Plants of the Week and our Arizona Cypress. If you want low-maintenance natives, easy care, and reduced water use, then this is the evergreen for you. When planted in rows, they block the wind, traffic noise, and make the perfect privacy screen. Comes in an Arizona blue, easy to grow, and prefers monsoon planting. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love native evergreens, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.